I'm Scott Schumann, the Sartorialist. They invited me to come out and talk a little bit about the blog that I do and photography and the ideas behind it. And you know, it's been such a great ride, you know, doing this the last couple of years and um, you know, having the kind of luxury of being able to build a, a brand quickly enough to be able to let people just do what you want to do. I mean, to have a job like this where you're just allowed to go out and shoot and capture things, you know, it seems like it's come very easily to me and very quickly to me, but it's like any kind of like, um, like a, uh, someone that's in the music industry or rock and roll person, you know, it seems like they have overnight success and yet it was 15 years of creating an eye and building a personal point of view that really made this happen what seems like very quickly. And uh, so tonight, you know, a lot of people know about the blog and they get a sense of the blog and what I thought would be interesting to talk about was what to me seems like a more interesting way to look at what I do and the blog and to get a little bit more from it. Um, you know, I mean, it's fashion and a lot of times um, when I'm writing something, I'll go through comments that people make. They'll say, well, you know, there are, oh, there are wars and this thing and that thing and all these other dramatic things, and this is just fashion, you know, and this is completely irrelevant. Why would you spend your time doing that? Why would you spend your life doing that? And, uh, and people, either they look at it that way, or I think a lot of people also look at it in a way and, and just almost like a, like, a, like a fashion grading system. And they'll look at each look and say, oh yeah, I like this, or no, I don't like that. Yes, no, yes, no. And to me, that so completely misses the point of what the sartorialist can be and what something like this, not only because of the photographs and because of the way that we talk about fashion, but also um, you know, the, how it is in terms of the interaction with the people, the people that I shoot, the interaction with the audience, what it means historically, what it means um, in terms of culturally, that um, you know, those are the things that if you're a fan of the site, I think I don't usually because you know I don't necessarily like to write a lot on the blog, but it would be you know some ideas of things that I get from the blog, the way that I use it, and a, a way of looking at it that will maybe mean something a little bit more, a little bit more deep, and mean something a little bit more to put it in context of photographically and and in terms of fashion that, to get a little bit more from it, you know, and something like this, this first two photographs to me are a perfect kind of um, idea of what the sartorialist is to me. These are two photographs I took about a year apart and to me they are kind of a perfect expression as to what the sartorialist is about. I mean th these are two gentlemen. One was shot, uh, the one on the left was shot in Paris actually right outside the Dries Van Noten store and I don't know this gentleman personally but apparently when I put him on the blog he's some kind of academic in Paris. A lot of people knew who he was but to me he's so chic. You know, I mean, he looks great and he has a persona about him and there's something, you know, beautiful about the photograph that I really wanted to capture. He looks a lot like my grandpa. Um, you know, my grandpa dressed very much like that. And about a year later in Milan, outside the Dolce & Gabbana show, I shot this guy named Hugh. And uh, to me, these are two guys that might never interact in real life. They might not ever run into each other. Their circles might not ever really cross, but not only you know, are their hats almost exactly the same, but I think you get a, a real essence of, even though they're two very different people, they're really very similar, and the way that they express themselves are very similar, even though they probably run in very different circles. And you know, if you put them two people in the same room, they might not have a lot to discuss, although I think when you got down to it, it would, they would be very, very similar people. So to me, this is really kind of the essence of what I do is, you know, how do people really express themselves through style? You know, it's, even though it's very fashion-based and, you know, I love fashion. I, I grew up, you know, I went to IU and took apparel merchandising and costume construction and, you know, Armani was a hero and Bruce Weber was a hero. That to me, fashion is very important, but it's less important than the, the kind of persona that you create. And one of the things I'm proud of with the site is it's not about, uh, you know, the price and how expensive something is, how modern it is, how uh, of the moment it is. You know, you have a show like um, Project Runway and they say one minute you're in, one minute you're out, which to me is so completely irrelevant and so completely the opposite of what I think because you know, if you've got great style, you're never really totally in and you're really never totally out. I mean, both of these pictures I could have taken 
you know, a year ago or six years ago, and they would look great at, uh, you know, any of those points. You know, and one of the things I've, I'm happy with with the sartorialist is that even though I tend to like, you know, kind of high end, you know, I took a lot of classes in terms of like pattern drafting and how to make things, and I like making things with my hands, whether it's cooking, whether it's photo, you know, photographs, whether it's, uh, you know, I took um, couture, uh, tailoring classes, things like that, that even though I tend towards something like that, and it c the site could be considered uh, elitist in the sense that, you know, I like to talk about, you know, something like Cesar Attalini, which is beautifully made suits, as opposed to being elitist or exclusion, you know, uh, exclusive, I think it's really very inclusive because, as you'll see as we go through the photographs, you know, I really shoot a lot of different types of people. You know, the only underlining um, relationship between any of them is what, to my eye, is a great sense of style and a great way of, um, of creating something that um, inspires me. Because, you know, most of these people I don't really know. I don't know them if they're great people, good people, bad people, whatever, but there's something about them and the way they express themselves that is really very inspiring to me. So I'll go through some of these first. These are some of the pictures just kind of, if you're not as familiar with the site, just to give you some of the ideas of, you know, some of the things that I like to shoot. This is one of my, you know, I don't want to say heroes, you know, I, this is a guy, Lino, that owns this really great store in Milan that, uh, you know, he's just like the perfect example of like an Italian, not really a playboy, but he's kind of a playboy. You know, he's done like, he never, he doesn't really speak any English, so I kind of talked to this guy, John Paolo, who interprets, um, you know, all the things that he's done, and he's just one of those guys that grew up in Italy, you know, was probably born right around, a little before the war, when Italy was still growing, and he just always had this great sense of style. He's done a million jobs. He worked in a watch factory. He was a, a hairstylist. I think he was kind of like a, a women's escort. Uh, he, he just did whatever he had to do to make it happen, but he always did it, I think, with such a, a sense of style and such a sense, you know, so chic that you really see it in his clothes. You know, a lot of times with someone like um, Lino, you know, uh, he's a perfect example. I'm not really, when I shoot someone like him, it's him, but it's not really him. You know, I don't know him well enough, and I, actually I know him well enough that, you know, I wouldn't really want to be like him, but there's something that I find very inspiring about him. There's something very charismatic about him. And, you know, he's really, you know, the way that he wears his clothes, his personality, even though he knows I'm American and I don't smoke, every time I see him, he always says, well, you know, you smoke, you smoke, and we go outside, you know, smoke. You know, it's just his, just his way. And it's so, un in a way it's affected, and in a way it's completely unaffected because it's so natural to him. A lot of times I'll have people make um, comments on the blog that says something like, um, oh, you know, he's trying too hard. And I think that's a really hard thing to say about someone that you don't know because a lot of these people, it's so natural. And when it's really real and when you can capture it in a photograph like this, when it's so natural to them, it's not trying hard. It's just who they are. It's part of who they are. Emmanuel Alt, who to me is just like, you know, the coolest of the cool. You know, I'm a, a huge fan. One of the th things that um, has been really rewarding for the blog and for me personally is, you know, I uh, worked in the business for quite a while and, you know, that was really great for me in terms of creating my eye and what I thought was good. I think the reason the blog has grown so quickly is not only because the quality of the photography, but also the, the edit of what I choose to shoot. All the people like Emmanuel and Corinne and people that are, you know, really pretty important players in the business, they say they really like the quality of the photography, but they really like what I choose to shoot and what I choose to, to um, point out and points of, um, you know, details, things like that I like to talk about. And they are always very accommodating when I want to take their picture because what they've told me is they always know that they're going to be on the blog with other people that they feel are really cool and really chic and that it's created a, a sense of, um, uh, you know, I always felt that if they gave me work to do, it was, a, it was kind of a stamp of approval and now it's kind of become all the way around that they feel kind of a stamp of approval when they show up on the site and, you know, we shoot it in a particular way. But, you know, someone like Emmanuel is, um, to me, like, 
uh, kind of like the dream persona of someone that's really built a brand of chic. And since that, you know, I think Paris Vogue is one of the best magazines that when you know those people, they do an incredible job of translating who they are as people onto the page. Um, you know, when you look at Paris Vogue, it's, it's sexy, it's cool, it's exciting, it's modern, and it's very much who they are as real people. And, you know, a lot of times when you work in a company as big as Condé Nast, a lot of that can get watered down, and you want to try and play it a little bit safe and take it a little bit easy, where, you know, Paris Vogue is just big enough that it's important, and I think it's by far the most influential fashion magazine, but it's small enough that I think they're not really afraid to go out and do something that's a little dramatic and a little sexy and a little over the top. And, you know, she's a perfect example of this. You know, when we're at the shows and she gets out of a car and she's usually getting out of a car with Melanie, who's an equally incredibly chic, beautiful young lady, and this girl, Geraldine, who's also so cool. And I don't know if you've seen that movie, Reservoir Dogs, when the guys are like, five guys are all walking, they look so cool. Well, that's what they look like. To me, they are like the fashion version of Reservoir Dogs when they're just so cool. When they walk into the show, it's like the C parts because they know like these are the coolest of the cool and yet they're the nicest of the nice. They're the most uh, you know, down to earth, funny, you know, they're always willing to offer you a ride, whatever. It's, to me, they are the exact opposite of what the Devil Wears Prada. If you look, watch a movie like that, I've certainly met a lot of, not a lot, a few people like that. And this is the exact opposite. And yet they are, to me, the most influential. And she's like kind of the, her and Corinne are kind of the leaders of something like that. This is a guy named George Cortina, who's a you know, pretty major stylist. And, uh, you know, I've really been happy that, you know, the the blog has become, you know, Time Magazine called it one of these influencers. And you, I spend so much time by myself walking around, shooting by myself, and, you know, you hear that stuff, but you don't really believe it until you go to a, I was at a, an appointment with designers from J. Crew, and, uh, and we were talking about khakis, and I said, oh, you know, I really want, you know, a khaki that's more slim, especially in the thigh, that's a little more slim. I said, you know, I, I don't know if you've ever seen this picture of that I did in Milan of this guy, George Cortina, and he's got these really slim khakis and a blue shirt, and he stopped me right there, the, the main designer, and he <laughs> looks at one of the other designers, and he says, bring out the look. And, uh, and he goes, I know that picture. I love that picture. And they have, in their presentation, they, they do to all the magazines, everybody, a look totally based on this picture. It was khakis that had been cut slimmer, a blue shirt like this, except they put it with a tie. And, uh, you know, it's so funny, you know, I love J. Crew, especially when I'm shooting, I'm, uh, you know, running around on the street in the summer and it's hot and whatever, I dress a lot in shorts and linen shirts and buy a lot from J. Crew. so when you have someone that's the, the head designer saying how much he loves specific parts of your work and that it's actually influenced their design, it's really, it's kind of weird, you know, it, it comes around uh, in a different way and, you know, something like this is, you know, such a great example of something like that. This is a shot I just did the other day in um, in uh, Yer in the south of France, and it's to me a, a real example of you know being in the moment. You know, as the sun was setting, it was setting you know to the to the front of her. She had all these lights around her. You know, it it's about the look, but it's about the setting. You know, for me, it's. It's about inspiration. When sometimes people want to try and pin me down and say, you know, what is this site about? You know, are you showing clothes or what are you trying to do? And the only thing I can say is I, I just try and shoot what inspires me and, and helps me dream. You know, a picture like this, you know, I like her outfit, but I just like the whole setting. Something like this just to me looks so cool. It's something that you want to look at and, and um, it makes you dream about how you want your life to be. And, um, you know, uh, this has been kind of a perfect image because it's not, you know, I've photographically, you know, I've, I haven't darkened it that much. But, you know, a lot of times when I take photographs, I'm not really reporting. I think the difference between what I do in terms of being a street style photographer, I don't really consider myself a street style photographer. I don't really consider the site a street style site. To me, it's just a blog that I do to shoot for inspiration. So a shot like this, the difference between what I do and a lot of other people is, you know, they, I think a lot of times shoot in a way that's more reporting. And maybe they don't, 
get the lights in at the top, you know, and they don't make sure that she's standing in this walkway. This was just a walkway that was walking to the tent where this fashion show was on the beach in, at Yair. And to me, all these other little details were more important to set up the dream of what this photograph would be than whether her pants were khaki or whether they were blue and whether her sleeves were rolled up or not. To me, it's the whole image, you know, it's the way the walkway kind of takes you into the picture and zooms off that way. I love those kind of lights. I don't know why, but uh, it's the difference between when you're reporting and when you're doing something inspirational. And so, you know, a picture like this, when, you t when I take a picture like this, you know, the best thing that can happen to me is when you go meet with someone and, you know, some designer and you see your pictures up on their walls. A lot of times, you know, I used to work with a lot of designers and when I had a showroom, they, when you would ask them about a particular collection, they would say, oh, you know, I'm dreaming about this girl and she does this and she does that. And it's always very abstract. And I think the reason a lot of designers like the, my site is it's one of the first times where they've had a chance to really print and look at pictures of girls who are real and really personify who it is that they want to dress. Because a lot of times who you're dressing and who you want to dress are two different things. And so you know, I, when I was at, in Yair, I met um, Ricardo Tichy, who's the designer for Givenchy. You know, and, I mean, he's doing great work. Givenchy looks really good. And, um, and he's a total fan of the site, which was great for me, you know, because, you know, you hope that people like him, you know, I mean, Givenchy's a major brand and doing major work. And the fact that he knew, not only knew the site, but really knew the site, and he could cite specific photographs and things like that, says to me that, you know, pictures like this, they don't happen all the time, but when you get them, it's really worth it. And it's something that affects, affects design happening right now and then hopefully will affect designers, you know, 50 years from now or 100 years from now. So one of the things I like to try, you know, what I'll do is I've got a couple of sections of things that kind of break down the site in different ways and just the ways that I, the ways that I look at the site. And to me, the main thing that, that I look in the site is what I like to call abstract inspiration. And, you know, a photograph like this, you know, is a perfect example of that. I do a lot of like kind of detail shots. This guy was actually wearing a pretty reasonably crazy outfit in the sense that it was, I don't know, maybe you, there were quite a few like street bloggers at this Yair fashion festival. So his picture was probably up in other sites, but he was wearing two shirts sewn together that I guess he could flip over this way and wear it one day and then, and then the other way the other day. And, uh, you know, I don't know if anyone would really wear that, and even though it wasn't a look that I necessarily related to, I was able to look at and say, you know, I don't really like the form and the silhouette of what he's doing, but I love this kind of crazy color combination between these two, two floral patterns, this kind of sash thing that he was doing here. And, you know, what I think a lot of people who, the difference between people who are in fashion and really do it for a living and people who kind of look at it from the outside is people who are in the business can look at something that isn't, obviously inspirational and beautiful and be able to look at it in an abstract way enough to see how it makes them feel and maybe change it enough to do something different. So like when I look at an outfit like this, I wouldn't, if you actually saw the whole outfit, I think a lot of people would say, oh, you know, that just doesn't, I don't relate to that at all. So that's why I did a very specific detail because I didn't want to kind of muddy the waters. You know, to me it was all about this kind of great kind of color combination, pattern combination. I could totally see myself doing, you know, some kind of shorts like this and a shirt and, you know, some kind of navy jacket and tennis shoes or, you know, even a woman being able to do like a skirt and a bodice or some kind of dress that incorporates these two prints that, you know, it's this idea of looking at something not as a yes or no, I like it, I don't like it, being able to look at it and saying, how does this make me feel, you know? I, I, when you're able to, to look at something, you can't look away. And you keep looking at it saying, you know, there's some reason I can't stop looking at it. I don't like it, but I, there's something about it that, that draws me in. And I think the people who are successful and designers who are successful are people that are able to look at this and, and brush aside the things that they don't like about it and focus on the one or two elements that keep them interested or inspired. And, um, you know, it's pictures like this, I think people like Ricardo Tichy and people like that that look at it and they probably look at this and don't see it as two floral patterns or three floral patterns, I think they look at it and say, oh, you know, I could do two graphics, you know, two mixed scale um, checks, 
two stripes and two different variations. It's the idea of kind of clashing things that kind of go together and kind of don't go together. So it's so much bigger than what this is. It's just kind of a starting point. It's a talking point that you put it up on your wall and you think clashing patterns or patterns that are close but different or color combinations that are close but different. Um, and that's something that's kind of hard to um, communicate in a blog the way I want to, but I think the people that really get something from the blog are the people that really kind of understand something like that. Or something like this. This is a young guy at the Dries Van, he works for Dries Van Noten. And this is a guy that's, you know, kind of riding that fine line in between men's wear and women's wear. It's something that men can look at and say, well, there's a guy wearing, you know, this kind of floral pant and, you know, looks kind of an interesting kind of take on something like this, but, you know, a woman can look at also and see it in a different way or take a piece here or there. And to me, this is just, you know, I don't know if I would wear this, but it's something I can look at and say, well, you know, I might wear this as shorts, you know. It's a, it's a green t-shirt or a blue t-shirt with a floral pair of shorts, you know, something that's just, it's, it's inspired by this, but just different enough. Or like, this is a shot I just took the other day. It was a girl that was painting this cafe. I don't know if you guys know Moby. This is Moby's restaurant in the East Village. And she just happened to be in there painting the, the front of it that day. It was kind of closed down and she was painting the front. And I walked by because there's a really great little restaurant right next to it and I had lunch. And when I walked by, I saw her and I thought, oh, she looks really interesting. And s when I was done with lunch, I came back and asked her if I could take her picture. And you know, it, it's another one of those situations where I don't necessarily see anyone, I, I wouldn't say go out and wear this outfit, but I totally see someone like, um, if you've seen um, the YSL collection for men this spring, it's this kind of like painter's inspired collection that I could completely see someone like, you know, Stefano from YSL or someone like that looking at this and, and taking a picture like this, a very real life picture and saying, I can completely imagine this glammed up. You know, I mean, she already has really dramatic hair, you know, a small top, whether it's a bodice, whether it's a tank, you know, pants that are kind of paint splattered or, you know, a skirt that's paint splattered, this kind of idea and the, the toughness of this, and yet she's really sexy, you know, you get a sense of her body underneath. Um, she rides that really super fine line between being tough, I like to call it sweet and sinister, you know, she's a little sweet, she has kind of soft features, and yet she's kind of tough, you know, you're not going to mess around with her. And these are the kind of abstract photographs that um, I think people find much more interesting and that, you know, when you're not in the business, maybe it's harder to figure out why I would put something like that up, but it's really something that, I, and actually it ended up getting a really great reaction. And this is um, a girl I shot in Paris. And again, it's one of those shots that you just, you know, she almost looks like Little Red Riding Hood. You know, she's got this great coat, and I see her all the time at the shows. I've never seen her look this way again, and I've never taken her picture, which makes kind of an awkward situation. But to me, this is such a great image. You know, she's dark, she's got her hood up, she's got this kind of coat, and her eyes are dark. I mean, she's not traditional beauty, and yet you can't, I mean, I don't know about you, but I can't stop looking at her. I think she looks so perfectly mysterious, beautiful. It's, a, to me, the kind of photograph that makes you dream. It's one of those kind of haunting images that makes you think about, you know, how do you create that kind of persona? And she hasn't even been able to, to continue something like that, but it was just one of those moments in time where you see it and you say, I can't not take that shot. So, you know, one of the things I like to try and do with the style, you know, with the site, is, um, you know, there's certain photographers that I've always been really inspired by, and Bruce Weber is probably the, the main photographer, and not so much because of his work for, um, like, Ralph Lauren, you know, he's done Abercrombie and Fitch, he's done a lot of, you know, major, he's created some of the most iconic images of the 80s and 90s and into, you know, the 2000s. And, um, but it's less his fashion work and more the combination of his fashion work with his, you know, kind of own personal work it was really super inspiring to me. He has a place in Montana, and he'll shoot his neighbor who has a farm there. And, you know, uh, my perception is this guy doesn't make a lot of money, and he's a farmer, and he's not necessarily chic or whatever. But, you know, Bruce Weber takes these pictures of him and shoots him with the same level integ of integrity and the same level of respect, the same level of love that he shoots Kate Moss or any other high-end model for Vogue or anything else. And there was a huge inspiration to me when I was learning about photography, you know, when I would shoot my own kids, when I would shoot someone on the street, when I would shoot, you know, a model, whatever, that 
you know, I wanted to be able to shoot them with the same level of integrity. And same thing when I, now that I'm traveling, this site started out very New York centric, but all these offers started coming up to travel all around the world. Um, this first one is a shot that I took in India. And, you know, I really had to ask myself, do I want to go to India and shoot, you know, cliched images of girls wearing saris and put it on the blog and say, oh, you know, isn't this girl great wearing this sari? And, but I've seen images like that. But what I haven't seen are images like this, you know, girls who, you know, to me, you could put her anywhere. You could put her in Paris. You could, she's actually from Mumbai, but she could be in Paris. She could be in New York. She could be anywhere. And some people on the blog had a difficult time saying, well, you know, if you're going to shoot someone like her, why don't you just stay in New York? But to me, I've seen those pictures of beautiful women wearing saris. And I certainly was not, I wasn't not going to shoot it if I thought it was a particularly interesting color combination or if they had tied it in a different way or shaped it in a different way. So I was open to shooting that, but this is the kind of shot that I haven't seen from India. You know, I haven't seen shots of girls like this that you know, are so cool and so chic. And I actually got to know her a little bit um, while I was there. And she's, a lot of people talk about Audrey Hepburn as like a really great kind of style icon, and she's one of the closest girls I've ever met that has that kind of persona, the way she moves, the way she talks, her outlook. I mean, it's difficult in India when you're a young businesswoman. She owns a boutique in, in Bombay and Mumbai, and you know, even just getting a taxi, she said, is always very frustrating for her because the men, the guys that run the taxis, you know, are still very chauvinistic, and, but she always had such a positive point of view, and I think you can see that in her posture and the way she holds herself. Um, you know, once I decide I want to shoot someone, once I decide I want to shoot them, then I really try and figure out how to take the very best picture I can. And I don't usually shoot for too long or take too many images, take too many snaps. But I like to try and capture something a little bit about them. And it's not so much my photographic skill, but I think a lot of the people I choose to shoot are just so in touch with themselves that that's just her. That's the way she stands, her posture, everything. It's just so natural for her. And I think that's why it's so inspiring for a lot of people is that you, know, you look at this and her dress is beautiful. She's you know, even tinier than I am. And in something like this, you wouldn't really think a girl that was so tiny would be able to carry off such a long dress um, and do it so well and look so chic and still look long and still look really beautiful. Her arms look long. I think she, in this photograph, looks a lot longer than what she really is, but she has created such a, a personal brand and such a personal style that she's, every time I saw her, she looked great, like a million bucks in a lot of different ways of dressing. But, you know, she was just so in tuned with herself that um, to me it was incredibly inspiring. And to me, you know, you could put this girl anywhere and she would just be, you know, the most chic girl that was walking into the room, except for you guys. Um, and this is like, <laughs> except for all the women here. Um, this is in Beijing, uh, at kind of this kind of art community. And again, it's this idea that, you know, uh, India is kind of turning around, or not India, China is kind of turning around. But, you know, there's still girls, like my perception is that she didn't have a lot of money, that this is not about brands, it's not about expensive clothes, but it's really about this kind of beautiful combination of textures and layering and um, color. And, you know, I love the combination of her dressed so kind of quiet and pretty and, and kind of understated in this really kind of rough um, background that um, to me, you know, I think it really says something globally that a lot of people, even though this is an area that a lot of people have never been to, can totally relate to this image. And I think a lot of girls, whether you're in Austin, Texas, or, you know, Chicago, can look at something like this and, and be inspired and completely be able to relate to something like this that in certain ways, you know, there's globalization and we're all becoming more alike, but at the same time, that I think I take a lot of pictures also, they're still very specific to certain areas. I put a picture up the, uh, the other day of a guy in, um, who had a very specific way of tying his tie that you really only see in, in Italy. It's a very kind of loose knot, you know, the side, you know, the um, dimple is kind of always over to the side. And, you know, I've done this long enough that even if he was in New York, if I walked up to him on the streets, you know, I would have approached him in, in a completely different way. I probably would have said, you know, uh, ciao, you know, uh, molto elegante, you know, whatever, to at least get him to know, like, you know, I kind of understood who he was, and that really helps when you're shooting on the street and you're approaching people that you don't know, if they get a sense that right away you know a little bit about them and you understand them a little bit, it really helps. And um, so we, there's a certain globalization, and yet 
one of the things I try and capture on the side are things that are still very specific. Things that are very specific to Paris. Things that are very specific to London or Milan. One of the other things that I think it's really interesting about the site, not only you know because it's photographic, but be also because of the interaction with the audience, are things that will end up becoming. They're important now, but I think are going to become even more important in a, in, a, in a historical document 50 years from now, 100 years from now. Because when you put these pictures up, you know, something like this or a couple of these other images, you know, like smoking right now is a big hot, hot point issue. So whenever I put a picture up, doesn't matter how great the outfit is, you always get a certain amount of con you know, comments like, smoking kills, smoking's bad for you, smoking's this. And you know, who knows what smoking's going to be 50 years from now or 100 years from now. But because I can take a picture and put it up an hour or a day later, what we're capturing is what people think about certain issues right now that people will be able to look back at you know, 50 years from now and say, you know, smoking was really an important issue at this time. People felt really, really in, involved you know, and really related to this issue at this particular point. So even though this is a fashion photograph, you know, quite a few comments on this particular photograph or the one before or something like this um, were driven around that, you know, here's another really chic guy smoking, you know, the sartorialist, are you glamorizing smoking? You know, I don't think, you know, the, this guy is actually a pretty well-known photographer. He was at, this was outside of the um, Jean-Baptiste Valley show in Paris, and he was just standing literally like this. And I guess because he's a photographer, I was walking up to him, and I was just telling him, don't move, don't move, don't move. And so he just stood just like that. And to me, this is a photograph of a guy who's just so super chic that, oh, you know, so many people still smoke in Europe that I don't really notice that, and I'm not going to change the shot in any way because you don't want to miss that. That is the shot, not, not his hand up, down, side, whatever. That's the shot. But you know, that's a really important issue right now. I didn't put one up here in fur, but like fur is another thing, or you know, a complete surprise to me is um, what an incredible hot topic uh, flip-flops are. People love flip-flops or they hate them. And uh, you know, it's something that you, because we're in the moment right now, you don't really think about, but you know, if we, there's never been a time when someone was kind of shooting real people on the street that you had this kind of instant feedback from the people looking at these images that you have right now. You know, Lartigue was a major photographer in Paris in the turn of the century, in the early part of the 1900s. And he shot people that he thought were fashionable, but he was a pretty young guy, and he didn't necessarily at that time work for Vogue or any fashion magazine. So it's hard for us to be able to judge whether or not the people he was shooting were also considered by fashionable people to be fashionable at that time. To us, they just look like such a different way of dressing that they all kind of look fashionable. But we don't really have a read on what people at their time thought. Now, you know, because I'm lucky enough to be able to shoot with people like Paris Vogue and American GQ, that gives me a certain stamp of authority that people, I think, trust my eye in terms of me shooting what I think is particularly stylish at this moment. But because of the format, we have people who can also put their comments in and what they think in this moment. And I think the historical perspective will be 50 years from now, people can look back and say, wow, you know, we don't even, you know, we have these jetpacks, we don't even touch the ground. Who thought flip-flops were such an issue back then? Or, you know, I would have loved to have heard what the real life issues were of clothing, you know, in the 17, you know, in the 1790s or something like that. You know, your bustle's not big enough, your butt got to look bigger, you know? <laughs> what the real issues were, and I think that's something that I just lucked out that I've started doing this at a time when we can actually capture these points of view and what these issues are at this moment. So when I look at the site, I'm shooting things that you know, I'm going to put up for right now and that make a, make a difference right now, but sometimes I also think of you know, what it's going to mean 50 years from now or 100 years from now, um, because that I think is pretty, pretty special. You know, there's also this whole thing, you know, smoking is, is, a, is a kind of a thing, fur is an issue, um, flip-flops are an issue, and there's also this whole kind of thing right now that androgyny has taken a place where it's now still kind of different, and yet it's almost become kind of so commonplace that you kind of notice it, but you don't. And um, so I always think that these images are kind of really interesting because a lot of people say they can't figure out if it's a man, if it's a woman. They, um, a lot of times the most difficult comments that I get from people that I end up censoring is 
when they can't figure it out. And you can tell, it makes them really upset. It really gets them frustrated when they can't look at someone and say, I know what this is, you know, I know how to classify this person. You know, this is a, a young male model. Um, and so many times, because I'm not always able to, to update the comments right away, some people know who he is, some people don't, that I had a lot of comments that just naturally assumed that he was a she and made comments, and not mean comments, but just comments based on that. And, um, you know, it'll be interesting to ha see how something like this evolves. You know, in the beginning it was very noticeable and now it's becoming less so. And how is something like this going to evolve? And I love these kind of comments and it's something I think historically will be very interesting where you start to see the acceptance of someone that by a certain group and, and how this is going to grow bigger and bigger and bigger where people just, you know, first they're upset by not being able to figure something out and then, you know, do they become more intrigued? Do they become more interested? Do these people become more celebrated for this kind of interesting vagueness? There's, um, you know, style is something that I think a lot of people get very caught up and they think style means, you know, spending a lot of money, that style has to be a really expensive suit, that style has to be, you know, Prada and uh, Marnie and whatever. And yet, uh, there are certain style cues that, you know, I start to see on the blog that um, people just assume, doesn't matter what you're wearing, that if they see certain things, they think something. And one of the things I've found is, I think is always very odd, is if you're an older man and you have a beard and you're not in a suit, they think you're homeless. And this is a perfect <laughs> example of this guy that I had taken a picture of on Madison Avenue, and I had seen him walking way down the street and it just, you know, and I asked him if I could take his picture and he just took, you know, he took this pose on his own. And to me, once I got a full look at him, I could tell he was somebody. He definitely was not homeless. But he, you know, he has a very specific look. And, um, but because of where I was in the city and because of the little things, the patches are just too perfect, you know, the, the cardigan fits too perfectly. The, the shirt, you know, hits just at the right part on his hip. There's no way this guy was homeless. And, um, the, uh, you can't see in this image, but further back are the Ralph Lauren offices. And my guess was he worked somewhere within Ralph Lauren and I saw someone else who just happened to walk by a couple minutes later and I showed him this picture and I said, who is this guy? And they said his name's Doug and he actually buys all of the um, vintage pieces and like antique pieces that go into the Ralph Lauren stores all around the world. And um, so I didn't say that on the blog. I put his picture up and all these people said, wow, you found this really chic homeless guy. And I didn't... <laughs> And I didn't have the heart to tell him that he probably makes more money than all of you put together. <laughs> and uh, actually, my first exhibit, I had put that image up of, this, of him when he's smoking on the street like that. And a guy from the New York, I think it was the New York Observer, he didn't ask me before he wrote his review. And he did, you know, kind of a, like a paragraph on him and how I included this homeless guy in my show with all these other people. And I'm sure he read it you know, because it's a reasonably well-read paper. I'm sure someone showed it to him. And, uh, you know, I think it's such an interesting thing when you look at something like this, the perception of what is stylish and the perception of what's not or how people perceive certain people that even though, you know, maybe they don't have a lot of money and maybe they do a particular thing, you know, you wear heels or whatever, these little funny elements that make people think, you know, you've got more money than you do or you've got less money than you do. And I think it's something that's always very interesting when you, when, you, when you look at this blog, what those things turn out to be. Another thing that, you know, I didn't really uh, set out to do when I started the blog, because I just, you know, I feel, very, I feel very free because it's my blog and I don't have any overhead. You know, I don't have to fire any people that I feel completely comfortable to go out and shoot what I want to, when I want to, however I want to, if I, I'm not feeling it that day and I want to go have, you know, three margaritas for lunch and stumble around for the rest of the afternoon, I can do it. And, um, and it's being open like that that sometimes, you know, you stumble into the best situations. And one of the things I hadn't really, you know, I, I constantly try to, keep, the hardest thing I have to do is try and keep my mind open. I know if I have a GQ page done, you know, due within the next couple of days, you know, I'm kind of looking for stuff in the GQ page, but I've got to keep my mind open to seen whatever it is. You know, it could be a guy playing basketball, it could be whatever. I feel my only job is to shoot things, to be, keep open enough to myself to shoot whatever I feel inspires me. One of the things that has always inspired me are 
you know, people of great style. And a lot of times it's these people, you know, they, people say, are you, are you born with style or is it something that you learn and develop? And, you know, after doing this for a while, if you've seen pictures of me in second grade, you would know that you're not born with style. That's something you can develop. And um, a lot of times I think the most stylish people are these really elegant, you know, older people. And one of the things that a lot of people have noticed about the site that I didn't really intend on doing, but just happened is, um, you know, so many fashion magazines are just constantly pushing the idea of, you know, how to look younger and how to maintain your youth and all of this. And I mean, the fact is, we're, none of us are getting younger. We're all going the opposite direction. And the, an image like this, I always get so many comments, you know, it always gets such a great reaction because I think people want to figure out, you know, how do you grow old gracefully? How do you get ready for the next step? How do you do that? Because, you know, trying to, 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 cap, to recapture youth is just, it's not going to happen. And a lot of times people, have, as they get older, you know, find a certain confidence in themselves and find a certain way of um, feeling comfortable with themselves that really come across in these images. So a woman like this, you know, this was one of those images that, you know, I don't usually beg for a photograph. This was one of the few that I was begging to take her picture because this was in Milan and she spoke hardly any English. And I kept telling her, trying to explain to her, you know, pointing at my camera, telling her I wanted to take a picture, and she kept saying, oh, no, uh, mi bruta, you know, that she didn't feel beautiful. Uh, and I had to keep trying to explain to her, no, I think you're very pretty, very pretty, without making her think I was hitting on her, which is a very fine line. But, um, you know, when you have images like this that you can capture, you know, it's so rewarding when people look at this and say, oh, you know, either they look and they say it reminds them of someone that they're related to, or it's something that they want to grow into. You know, a guy like this in London, it's just such a character. You know, you know he's gotten to a certain point where he just, he just wants to do his thing, and yet he's lived a certain life and is, you know, you really see these kind of influences, you know, that he's just going to do his thing. And something like that I find a million times more inspiring than, you know, a 15-year-old wearing another graphic T-shirt. You know, if there's one thing I think that separated my blog from a lot of other blogs, and you can have street-style blogs, is it's usually a bunch of 20-year-olds shooting other 20-year-olds uh, because that's really their limit of, of experience where, you know, I'm a little bit older, you know, I've been around a little bit more, and I'm a little bit more open to a lot of different things. That, that's something I think it's been a really great um, addition to the site. And when people say, you know, this is just fashion, you know, how can you spend your time doing this? You know, I look at images like this and think, you know, when was the last time that people of a certain age were really celebrated for who they are, their natural beauty, their experience. You know, when you look at old Esquire magazines when they were still doing the illustrations, you know, there was always these really guys who were accomplished and elegant and a little bit older and, and, um, and I think we really lost that. So, you know, I look at something like this and think, you know, this is, I think, an important social thing. And when you have young people who are now looking at people who are older and saying, you know, that person inspires me. To me, I think I'm very proud of that. You know, I'm, I think it's really something that's a little bit different. And, it, and it's not even just kind of like a cliche or I'm trying to be nice or whatever. I mean, these people, you know, like this guy, I totally ripped off his total outfit. You know, I love the Converse. I have a sweater like that. I have a scarf like that. I have a coat like that. I mean, I used this specific picture for an outfit when I went to um, Stockholm in December, and I looked at that picture, and you know, the thing is, I realized I have all of those pieces. I just had never put it together that way. And so I love the idea that the, you know, this old Japanese guy you know, is inspiring me to, to look at my own wardrobe in a different way. You know, or a guy like this, this is a guy that was in a, a showroom in Milan, and I mean, he always looks like this, so chic. And uh, I ended up getting a gray suit from Ralph Lauren. I showed him this picture and I said, I wanna look like that, but I don't wanna wait that long. I wanna look like it right now. <laughs> you know, and that one of the other things with the site is not only you know, are you capturing things that are happening right now, but I think, be, you know, hopefully if I get to do this the rest of my life, even with the short amount of time I've been able to do it, you know, there are certain subjects that I've found that you know, kind of evolve over a certain amount of time. This is a girl named Kelly who had just moved to New York. I think she'd only been in New York for a very short amount of time, maybe a month or something like that. And this is what she looked like. And I didn't, I ended up shooting her later. And I didn't remember I had shot her this time because she looked so incredibly different. This is what she looked like the first time I shot her. And then this is what she looked like, like a year later. And 
it's not, and she had forgotten I had shot her until she went back and had a look and found that picture and pulled it over and she, and then she remembered and we kind of put the th two things together. But you know, because you know, some of the people I do shoot are young and, and have this great kind of style, I think it'll be really interesting to watch you know, how these certain people evolve over time, you know, how their life evolves. You know, she's still a young girl, she's probably in her early 20s, you know, who's really finding her style. How is it going to evolve? How will her style change as you know, either she gets married, she has kids. It's hard to keep dressing and putting the same amount of attention into your kind of personal brand that you had in the beginning. So even though, you know, and that's a very real life situation, you know, when you're not that busy, you can really think about how to put together a great outfit like this and how to create that. It's much tougher when you've got a kid and this thing and that appointment and all this other stuff to maintain that. And that's, you know, I, you know only the, few, the, the short amount of time I've been doing this, there's probably, you know, 15 or 16 people that would love to shoot over the next 15, 20 years to really see how that evolves and how these certain people evolve and kind of keep that kind of timeline that you just don't, again, I, I can't really think of many people historically that have shot something like that that is not only a character study of a particular person but also a style study. I should, that's good, I should trademark that. Uh, you know, and here's like a, you know, someone who's become like a star on my site, this woman Giovanna, who, she's a young Italian stylist and you know, I think she'll probably end up becoming one of the major style icons of modern, of modern Italy. You know, she's always just looks like one million bucks. She always looks so cool. And, um, you know, that's one of those things that when I look at this blog, you know, she's, she's kind of become a star. People know who she is. A lot of people have started to become, to know who she is. And so I always ask myself, you know, how many times can I shoot Giovanna? But at the same time, I always, when I'm at the shows and I know she's going to be there, I always wonder, you know, what's, you, what's Giovanna going to wear today? You know, what's um, Anna Della Russa going to wear today? What's Emmanuel Alt going to wear today? So, you know, I have to be still remain true to myself, and if I'm still interested in it, I still give myself the the reason to shoot something like that because I I do think it's very interesting to capture this moment in time because you know. When I'm gone and when she's gone, it, this will still be a very kind of interesting moment in terms of, you know, what she was wearing, what she, you know, she has access to a lot. They don't give her free clothes, but people like to be seen in her clothes, so she has access to a lot of things. The other, one of the other important issues is, you know, what, relate, what translates from what you see in the runway to what people like her who are really, you know, kind of the influencers, what they do choose to wear, and I think that's another thing that, um, will be interesting as the site evolves, is what's the difference between what you see on the runway and what people are really gonna wear. And even her, you know, she's certainly not a real person. She's kind of iconic in her look, but you know, that's still that kind of relationship between what's the difference between what's runway and what's reality and what is the dream of, you know, what you see in the runway and how do you really make it into your real everyday life. And, um, Hopefully, you know, she'll be someone that you can watch over the next couple of years. So that is my presentation and, uh, you know, kind of an idea of some of the ways that I think about my own blog.